This next mode of action is the photosynthesis inhibitors that include a variety of very active herbicides. In this case, it's uh, Lorox, other herbicides that are commonly used here in the low desert of Arizona and California that you might be familiar with are uh, Atrax or Atrazine, Sencor, Velpar, um, Carmax. These are all photosynthesis inhibitors. And what they do is they don't actually stop photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process in the plant that is used, as you know, to convert sunlight into other forms of energy that the plant can utilize. And it's uh, when the plant is trying to move this energy out to where it's needed elsewhere in the plant, it inhibits that transport system, which, for, which starts a chain reaction uh, which uh, causes uh, all kinds of abnormal processes in the plant that, uh, that eventually lead to death if a lethal dose is uh, absorbed. Um, symptoms uh, are uh, of this uh, mode of action is an intervenal chlorosis, stunting, and death. With some of these herbicides, you get a venal chlorosis, uh, and in some, you just get a uniform bronzing of the leaves. But in all cases, the plant ceases to grow and eventually dies. Um, it is, uh, these, these herbicides have both soil activity and post-emergence foliar activity. They're very systemic. Um, let's look at some of the symptoms that you might see from this mode of action. In this case, this is Lorox and it's bean, this is beans that are affected. And you can see on this bean plant, you can see that we have this intervenal chlorosis um, where the plant, the leaves have turned yellow while the veins stayed green. The plants are very stunted. This will eventually turn necrotic and die. Um, a little bit more progressive uh, stage from this, uh, this herbicide would be something like this, where this le these leaves started with the intervenal chlorosis and it progressed to necro necrosis and death. They're uh, typically very slow acting, um, uh, but the weed control, as you can see in this case, is remarkable, and this includes some of our most effective herbicides. Okay, now we're standing in the cell membrane disruptors. Um, this particular herbicide was Goal. Other herbicides that use this mode of action are things like AIM, uh, Paraquat or Gramoxone, Chateau, um, uh, ET. Uh, these, uh, a lot of the new chemistry uh, that we're seeing in recent years have been these, um, these uh, cell membrane disruptors. Uh, many of them are uh, PPO inhibitors, and what they do is they uh, cause, uh, they rupture cell membranes uh, on the leaves where they contact the plant. Um, they're not systemic. Um, or very little systemic activity. They mainly work almost like a contact herbicide where the, the uh, 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 leaf surface that is contacted and uh, within a very short time, maybe 12 to 24 hours, you initially see a dark green water-soaked appearance where the cell membranes have been uh, destroyed and you get a, a leaking of intercellular fluids. Uh, and that progresses very quickly to a necrotic look to the plant. If you contact enough of the plant, it will kill it. Um, if the plant still has some vigor, it will often recover because these are not systemic herbicides. Um, you'll see symptoms within 12 hours in general. And what they normally look like, here's a uh, bean plant. It shows very typical symptoms of goal, where you can see, uh, uh, oftentimes you'll see spots. In this case, the whole leaf is necrotic, and uh, you, uh, initially you get a water-soaked appearance and then necrosis, and this likely is going to die. However, 
It's not systemic and you can see new growth coming out here in the middle. Oftentimes, if the, they haven't damaged the plant enough, it, it can recover and your symptoms will only be temporary. Um, there are, with, at high rates, you can see some soil activity from these herbicides where you're creating a barrier on the surface and when the weeds germinate and uh, pro poke through the surface, they'll pick up the herbicide and it will uh, kill them in that manner. Most of these herbicides, however, are used as a post-emergence application. Now we're standing in the plots for the seedling shoot, root and shoot growth inhibitors. These are some of the older herbicides that we have. They've been around a long time, some of the most effective. They're all pre-emergent herbicides um, and includes things like the dinitroaniline. Sometimes people refer to them as the yellow herbicides, which include includes trifluralin or treflan, baylan, uh, and uh, um, prol. Uh, it also includes uh, other uh, shoot and root growth inhibitors like dactol and curb, uh, as well as prefar, which is not a dinitroaniline. The way these work is, they're mitotic inhibitors. You recall learning about mitosis or cell division where the plant goes through several phases in, in uh, uh, um, increasing uh, cells. Um, and um, one phase, you'll recall, where the uh, going through mitosis where the spindle cells form and pull the chromosomes once they've been formed apart to form a new cell. What many of these herbicides do is they stop that uh, mit mitosis at that point, so you get you stop getting cell division. Um, these work at the root tips. They're not very systemic. When the when the plant germinates and puts out new roots, they, those new roots pick up the herbicide. Cell division stops right there at that root tip, and growth ceases. So what you typically get is restricted root growth or root development. And uh, we see that manifest in the plant by just a plant that looks like it doesn't have much of a root system. It looks like it's hurting for water and nutrients, which it is because it doesn't have a root system to pick up those, uh, the water and the nutrients. Symptoms will, are, are fairly characteristic with, we call them clubbed roots or pruned roots. Let me. Um, dig up some plants here that are untreated and some that are treated and show you what these symptoms look like. Okay, now here's a couple samples that were treated with prefar some time ago. Um, this corn plant was untreated and you can see it has normal root development where you get your, yeah, corn typically has a fibrous root system. You get your roots forming and then your root hair is forming from your main roots. Now here's a plant that was treated with tree farm and you can see the comparison. These roots have picked up, these from this treated plant, they've picked up the herbicide and, and stopped growing. So you'll typically get, uh, um, they sometimes referred to as clubbed roots, uh, where you get the root uh, system just uh, you stop getting cell division at that root tip, it gets swollen typically, which is why we call them club, and they just stop growing. You can see the different size in these plants. They're both the same age. This is eventually gonna, it, it's just not growing anymore. It's not gonna have enough of a root system to support the plant and will die. Um, these uh, herbicides are good on, mainly on grasses and some small seeded broadleaf weeds. This is a very typical symptom where you get the uh, lack of root, uh, root growth and you get clubbed roots. It's not often very clear. Uh, sometimes you just get a uh, where you have a plant like lettuce where you have a, a, a tap root, you won't get any lateral root development off of that tap root and it'll eventually die.